Are you flying? I'm not going. It's the winds are way too squirrely. Wait, 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 wait. I got, I got next it. week back, we're going. Okay, off, off. Thanks guys, appreciate it. all went 110, so we need to move. Almost the minute we launched, the wind shifted. Get your butt. surge coming, possibly with some rain. The typical question is, well, what's it like to fly in a balloon? Well, it's unlike anything else. It's something you just have to experience yourself. It's got a certain uh, romantic nature to it. Drifting with the wind, a hot air balloon in flight is like poetry in motion. A balloon flies when the air temperature inside the envelope becomes warmer than the air surrounding it. Balloons also travel with the wind. And because wind direction changes at different altitudes, pilots will raise and lower their balloon to alter their course of flight. It's a challenge because when you take off, you do not know where you're going to land. Adds a certain element of surprise to it, so it's unique. In August, the Panhandle communities of Scotts Bluff and Gearing hosted the premier balloon race of the year. Number six, I believe. The U.S. National Hot Air Balloon Championship, sponsored by the Balloon Federation of America. These guys are highly skilled. They're super fun to watch. It's very intense. They take it very seriously. She's going to swing back. She's going to swing back. It's a sport that requires pilots to use math, science, and technology. So now let's look, okay. and you can do a comparative, and then it's an educated guess, okay. just like the weatherman. But before any pilot goes up, flight decisions come down to Mother Nature. And then once I get the lights attached, I just take it, tie it to the bottom of the balloon. All right, you ready? Go. Ahead. It's um, calculating its wind speed and direction at that altitude based on um, where it's moved. And as it takes the readings, that's um, displaying it live on the a computer screen right there, in which, um, when we're done, will be sent to the event staff and the pilots. The readings are done in the early morning because the best time to fly a balloon is just after sunrise, when the winds are generally light. Well, uh, I don't want them packing up, if that's the question. Well, yeah, I'm just... But in a matter of minutes, the sky has gone from clear to overcast. Whatever it is, it has its own lightning. It's not being helpful. It has its own lightning. Yeah. I'm going to run out inside and take a look. Yeah. Yeah, we... So before, we, we the skies were completely clear just a little bit ago, and now it, it's completely overcast. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. Winds were out of the east-southeast at nine knots, a scattered deck at 3,300, and overcast at 4,100. Every competition day begins with a morning briefing. So you can see that there are improving conditions, and that's what I would expect throughout the morning. 
Along with information about the weather, including wind direction and speeds, pilots are also assigned tasks that must be performed during their flight. OK, well, let's do the task sheet, OK? A balloon race is less about speed and more about accuracy and navigation. Over the course of seven days, pilots will perform tasks during flights. And whoever comes out on top will represent the United States in the world competition held next year in Europe. You are not free to launch until you get a remind OK. We will either close it, cancel it, or open it. It keeps changing, so I expect that we're going to get another update. And we will uh, play it by ear. <laughs> Low clouds have delayed the start of the race. But even so, the pilots head out with hopes to fly. Uh, my radio's on, so let's communicate and uh, all right. I don't know why, but I feel like that cloud deck is lowering and thickening, and it was supposed to be breaking up, so. A pilot for over 20 years, Kelly Keller of California, has competed in the Women's World Championship. She's mentoring rookie pilot Petra Wilson of South Dakota. Maybe even more than that, because it's kicked pretty hard right. I can't say enough about her. She sacrificed the time of you know, her own planning to spend with me, to teach me and coach me. OK, so that's 84 degrees. Mm -hmm. So the pie ball went 110, so we need to move yep. that way. Okay. You see how that works? Petra may be a rookie, but she's also a former US Navy crew chief. I also got backseat qualified, so I did get to fly an F-18 Hornets when I was in the Navy, and that was unbelievable. Taking off in afterburners is a different experience than gently lifting off the ground. It looks like the clouds have heightened. So the last one they gave us a reading at 900 feet, now it's 1,700 feet. And the winds are now, they're just, they're from the southeast. Pilots need to find a location where the wind will carry them over the target. The target is a soccer field. The pilots must launch at least a mile away. This is where speed comes into play, as pilots need to get their balloon launched before the wind changes. Go ahead and hold it up real tall. OK, we're tight there, we're tight there. OK, let's see. Yeah, they're coming off. We got to pull it down. I'll go pull the red line, OK? OK, we're going to collapse it. Oh, yikes. It's kind of gusty, huh? You can walk down there. You can see she's going to put her top back in. Are you flying? I'm not going. That was a bit, bit much, wasn't it? It's The winds are way too squirrely. Yep, I would rather be on the ground wishing I was up in the air than be in the air wishing I was on the ground. Yeah. Everything we learned in the last 15 minutes has changed anyway. So maybe another day. Hold on. One, two, three. The strong wind proves too risky for rookie pilot Petra Wilson and her mentor, Kelly Keller. But it's not holding back Nebraskan Matt Fenster. I'm the only person from Nebraska here. Um, that's kind of neat. And then also having a little closer to home is nice as well. And then obviously, like I said, having relatives and crew out here. This direction, walk me this direction. Wait, wait, wait. I got, I got, what are you doing here? You're fine, wait. All your weight on, wait on. That's good, right there, stop right there. We're feeling better, we're feeling better. She's gonna swing back, she's gonna swing back. Okay, off, off. Thanks guys, appreciate it. It used to be called Old West Weekend. So many people in the Scotts Bluff and Gearing area had been part of it when it was here before. The first Old West Balloon Fest was held in the early 1980s. The event ran nearly 20 years before going on what turned out to be an extended hiatus. 
And though the balloons might have been gone, they certainly weren't forgotten. People really, either they had that emotional memory or their family member did and they'd heard about it. And I think that was really the key to our success when we started to bring it back. Everybody had that emotional connection. In 2015, the Old West Balloon Fest was successfully relaunched. We would be thrilled if 4,000 people showed, would show up. We would be absolutely thrilled. And about 15,000 showed up. <laughs> it was the best tourism event we'd ever had in the county. So we were thrilled to death. We've been enjoying the Balloon Fest really well. It's really cool to be able to see, like you see them flying over, but you don't really realize how big they are until you're down here. I like the night glows because I am just not a morning person. <laughs> yeah, our youngest daughter keeps saying, we have to get one of those balloons so we can go up in it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to go that far. A late night hailstorm only lasted a few minutes, but it caused major damage to cars, some balloons, and two jet airplanes flown in by a couple of the competitors. Speaking of hail, I just learned this morning a couple of uh, very big and expensive jets were severely damaged in the hailstorm. Uh, condolences to those uh, impacted by that. There's also a storm brewing among the pilots. While some elected to fly in yesterday's high winds, others thought it was too risky. We don't go to the FAA uh, in, in our sport. We go to Mari or we go to whoever the hierarchy is. Uh, going to the FAA and turning in a pilot, and I know that it happened, you just not done. How many of you would agree with that? I mean, let's, let's hear it. It's not how we work as a brotherhood, as a sport. You have to rest assured that the FAA is intimately involved in all aspects of our flight. The FAA and I and our team are in constant communication. Now, once you're in the air, it's your responsibility to fly according to the regs. You know that. The discussion all evolved around uh, the clouds that developed behind the pilots. Well, that'll blind you. <laughs> wow. See how those guys are now? They're going to the northeast. Way up high, they were flying south. <laughs> so very, we'll feel the wind. Unpredictable wind. <laughs> now it's gusty. We delayed the launch uh, so that we could make sure we had legal ceilings. Finally, uh, through the morning, uh, the ceilings began to get higher and higher and higher, and they got to a level that we felt comfortable with, and we released the pilots. Pilots make a decision on their own not to fly. If you're an avid competitor, you, you know what competition's about. Everybody that's a competitor wants to win, they want to use everything in their toolbox that they can to perform to the top of their ability. Competitive ballooning is not unlike any other sport where there's a disagreement on the ref's call. With the issue resolved, the pilots head out to fly. And while there'd be nothing better than a cloudless day, these Sky Cowboys have once again met their Western foe. It's been a strange year for weather, um, but that's just part of the part of ballooning. The rains aren't just affecting air travel. You wrap it around anything, it's gonna well, cut it or tie. We'll put another we'll carabiner. Put a carabiner on each end. This is what the brotherhood does. Put it in gear, Bessie. Okay, pull up.
this guy's in first place. <laughs> All right, they need to talk to him right, right now. He's <laughs> bleeding right now. Uh, it seems the clouds are in no hurry to leave. The pilots must simply wait them out. This is my first time I've driven through Nebraska, but I haven't spent any time. And all the farmers out here and the rest of the community has been really friendly and really happy to, to see us. Rhett Hartzell of Texas won the 2016 World Hot Air Balloon Championship. He's also the reigning national champion and is a strong contender to take this year's nationals. I was fortunate enough that my father, uh, I, he was flying since I was born, so I learned a lot from the ground up, if you want to call it that. And, uh, and he's kind of been a flying partner. He flies his own balloon. We just live it and breathe it as much as we can as a hobby. The last pop went to 2,900 feet. So. Like many of the other competitors, Hot air ballooning is a family affair. Rhett's father is also competing, and both of their crews include other members of their family. Two hours after the morning briefing, the clouds finally lift. Rhett and other pilots are launching here in an alfalfa field, southeast of the target. Competitors must throw their markers within the target boundaries to earn points. down. Wait until I bounce back. Woo! The minute we launched, the wind shifted almost 30 degrees. So we all ended up missing the target to the right, unfortunately. Clear to land where Zavada and Nick are. Okay, uh, see if this gate to the pasture on your left is open. Wire gate. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Oh. Okay, we'll try to keep it up until we hear from Kate. Rhett takes the first opportunity to land, but now waits for approval from the landowner for permission to be on his property. Okay. Take it down. Top rope. Take that top rope down. Remember the yellow ones go in the middle. The next is like red or blue. And I'll be red. Watch out! <laughs> I'm really excited to see the, the night glow. Pilots and the community come together at a final balloon glow. I want to thank y'all so much for coming to Nebraska. You have been the hit for the community. They love it. They love everybody. And to my old West pilots, thanks for coming again. Colleen Johnson, a pilot herself, has been with the Old West Balloon Fest since the relaunch. She's also played an instrumental role in securing the National Hot Air Balloon Championship. Uh, Colleen is very ambitious, and, and she knows what she's doing. Um, we by far have the, the best balloon meister and organizer that we could possibly hope for. We had this huge uh, presentation with all the mayors of our little cities and um, police department, everybody, and so, the site team was like, wow, nobody's ever rolled out the red carpet like this for us. One, two, three. We 
we visited the area. They pulled out all the stops. And it was uh, all I needed to at least come back to the board and say, this is a community, number one, that really wants us. Number two, the competitors would enjoy because it's a extremely balloon-friendly environment. As has been the case all week, the morning begins with heavy clouds. This morning when I checked weather, the temperature and dew point spread was really close, within one degree, which means that fog is uh, probably going to happen. We're right in the middle of it, and now we just have to wait for it to burn off. <laughs> All right, let me get the... Okay, that's awesome. All right. So if you could un-Velcro this stuff here, uh -huh. we're just going to go ahead and set this up. Starting to be movement where? Right ahead of us, about okay. four cars up. Okay, Greg, you go. I can do this. Greg, if you need to drive with me. You guys jump in. We'll ride in the back, okay? Oh, man, they aren't turning around, are they? Okay, just keep up with them. I'm not sure where you are, but I'm just going to go ahead and launch here. I think I'm just going to do my own thing. I'm going to see what I can come up with. So this is a good learning opportunity for me. Go, girl. <laughs> All right. No, we're good. We're going that way. The target is at Mitchell Airfield. To the northwest, Petra Wilson and her crew prepare her balloon for launch. Barb, can you do this side, please? Careful. You're getting it. Keep doing Velcros, you guys. Oh, what happened here? Guys, come on back. We got a mess. OK, Zachary, this is still a mess. Pull hard, pull hard. That way. I want you guys over here, OK? Pull hard. Zachary, give it a tug. I want to see what happens. Give it a tug. OK, we're OK. Bring it in. OK. Keep your weight on if you can. Zachary, go ahead and climb on in. Over here, put your foot in the footrest. OK, watch out for the roof. The thing's in here. OK, is there something up above us? Am I, if I go up hot and I go up fast, am I going to hit anybody? OK. Get me over on the screen that has the targets, OK? Okay, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get us to the targets now. Rookie pilot Petra Wilson takes to the air with her co-pilot son, Zachary. After a week of unpredictable weather, the winds are stable today, and the pilots make the most of it. Much to the delight of the audience, Lead contender Rhett Hartzell scores. Then comes Nebraskan Matt Fenster. All right, there's our target. So the order it's going to go is white, orange, white, OK? So I'm going to grab a white. Yeah, we are very close. This is, this is good. I'm feeling good about this. Um, not from Nebraska, so the fact that people knew my name, um, that was amazing. Mark number 
number three? Yep, I marked it. Okay. Yeah. Despite the unpredictable weather, it's been quite a week in Western Nebraska. We're a, a really friendly group from all over the U.S. We were treated here with open arms, it seemed like, with the landowners and the people around Scotts Bluff. So we look forward to coming back and uh, making new friends. Gosh, uh, hospitality here is great. Everything from, you know, going to restaurants to landowners. We've got a nice, friendly landowner. It just, you know, is very welcoming. People are very nice here. Here it's, I, I don't know, a little more homey, a, a little bit more down home. The people love us here. It has been amazing. We have had such a blast meeting new people. Is that how you want it? In addition to Colleen's dream and our enthusiasm and believing in her dream just as well, all of that pulled together as, as a strong collaboration, not only of Scotts Bluff and Gearing, but literally the entire Valley area. Um, and we made it happen. First place, Red Hartzell, congratulations. There you go. Very proudly.